John, as you look at the turnout for this race, the quality of the competition and the quality of the drivers, how do you rate your progress in making IMSA Endurance Racing the worldwide spectacle that I know you want it to be? We got a VCR for Christmas, Dave, and uh, we played an old uh, Camel GT promotion tape. And I couldn't believe how far we've come. I, I'm too close to it. I couldn't believe the difference between 1982 and now. Well, I think 20 years ago, I don't think many European racing teams believed that racing was very competitive over here. And slowly but surely, more and more European teams are coming over here and more and more drivers are coming over here because it's actually more competitive here than it is there. There were a lot of great American drivers in it, American cars, but not too many European cars. And then as it progressed over the years, of course, the Europeans started to realize it was a great series and in fact was probably better than we were having in Europe. I literally didn't really know racing existed at that point. And so I go to this race and my mind was blown three TV channels, there was maybe two races a year on TV. I didn't know this world existed at all, and so my life was changed from that point on. I was a young boy. He was an immigrant from Germany. His dream was to come and race in sports car racing in America. They went to Daytona, and my eyes were this big when I saw how amazing sports car racing was. You're a young punk, and you're you're wanting to be out there so bad and you're seeing these, these superstars, guys that you've wanted to be like for so long, in the back of your mind is, man, can, can I do that? Can I be one of those guys? I love IMSA and it's been such a huge part of my life, of my career, and of all of my achievement. Whether it was the Rolex 24 hours and all those victories, or the 60 victories that I've gotten along the way, or just my namesake in general is always gonna be known tied to IMSA and road racing. You know, as a family, we've got so much history here. It's like, it's like coming home every weekend when we go to the track. I remember being in victory lane with him, the 96 Rolex when he won that. By far, my favorite IMSA memory has to be winning the Daytona 24 hour with my brother and my dad and Max, and then going on to win the championship with, with Jordan. Winning the 24 hours of Daytona in 1981, winning Sebring in 87. When I look back on those days uh, very fondly, it was great racing. and. It was a pleasure going to those races. There are two things that separate IMSA, and that's the spectacle and the nature of American motorsport in general. Combine that with old school, hardcore racetracks that don't allow errors. The track limit things, that's not a problem anymore because you go off the circuit, you're on the grass, you're in the wall. IMSA has always represented this blend of all factory racing, big, big names and huge teams blended with a traditional sports car pro-am category. That blend is what has always been through the DNA of this awesome championship. Everybody wants to be in IMSA, everybody wants to race at IMSA and to show what they can do. Things become special when they have history, whether it be Sebring or Daytona. Those are big events that have been won by the greats. All the major results um, that I had in my career was uh, here in the States. It's that challenge, it's that battle. It's raw racing. It's exactly, I think, what the fans want, and it's what everybody involved kind of wants. As I said to somebody last year, you just watch IMSA, it's going to show the world how to run a sports car program. And sure enough, that's what they're doing.